tar on my feet. Look. Yeah. Right, right. That's how it is in South Florida. Well, after we stole all that money from the band, we retired here in Miami. Yeah. Nobody knows where we are. We ripped Bill Thompson off. And yeah. We had RCA front us a lot of money, and we just said, fuck it. Now we live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Bought yourself some cut off. And yeah. Just yeah. Out, right? Yeah, we got, we got tired of the music business, you know, so we're just... Uh, we make, we just make music now, like on the beach for the people, you know, like just for the moment. Reggae and stuff. Yeah. Little Calypso influences. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sure. Uh, you know, no records. Nothing but spontaneity. <laughs> what does RCA have to say about that? We're still looking. For well, us. they've got some attorneys, I think. Uh, That's why he's got. They're <laughs> looking for us down here. Mustache, uh, you know, they won't, they won't That's never why he has a T-shirt. Yeah. Well, how does it feel coming down to what they're calling the uh, Paradise Lost? Have you heard all the press in South Florida is getting? You guys, well, being on the road, you might be a little numb to the facts, but it is like getting out of hand. We just heard the Fort Lauderdale police officer uh, being hassled for cocaine distribution. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. We haven't started yet, have we? <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to edit this right at the front. <laughs> Listen, Mickey, let me start with you first, because last time we spoke, you were anticipating going on the road with Grace, and that's yeah. something that you've now, you know, is now... Yeah. You've got, we're, in the, in the, well, this is almost the end of the second tour now that we've done since Grace rejoined the band. And uh, I think it's made a real big improvement in the band, really. Uh, having Grace back in the band makes the band visually a lot more exciting to, to, to look at. Our, our crowds have been bigger and better, you know. It's definitely helped there. And I personally really enjoy singing with her a lot. Uh, she's such a kind of a flamboyant, charismatic personality that gives not only me, but everybody in the band is sort of a focal point to feed off of and, um, you know, energy, energy exchange back and forth. And it's made the band a lot more exciting, I would think. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there's seven people. How, where, how do you, what's the logistics, having not seen the show yet, uh, with seven people on stage? We run into each other yeah. a lot. Yeah. Knock, <laughs> bump, right. bump each other, <laughs> knock each other down. And, uh, no, actually, because it really it is like aside from uh, from Angelie being back on the drums, but but uh, the other six people in the band at various points of the set are all like right out front, you know. So uh, there's a lot of people out front. It gets crowded sometimes, but we we enjoy sharing the space yeah. though. You share mics with with Grace. What's the logistics? I mean, do you how are you working different mics and getting on? The only person I really share my mic with is Craig. I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. I like it when we get next to each other and we yeah. start running around, and all of a sudden. Your microphone cable gets caught up in my guitar cord. Yeah, And then we've got to try to look cool while we untangle it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just part of the act, folks. So. Yeah. Anything ever happen where, I mean, someone took a fall or recently? Paul falls a lot. <laughs> but it's, it's something that he's always done. He's always, uh, he hits himself in the, in the head a lot with his, with his guitar, you know, like he gets real excited. And well, what did he do once? He tried to... Uh, he tried to sit down on the stage or something. Remember that on the edge of the stage? He jumped off and he just crashed down real hard on the edge of the stage, like on his butt. But he, and I know it must have hurt real bad, but he tried to pretend like it didn't hurt at all. And he's, and he's just sitting on the stage playing. I know he was going through some pain, but. He's not the only guy who falls. The other night, uh, <laughs> we came out for the encore and it was a real tight stage, so they had a lot of tripods for the lights in the way, you know, and I came out, you know, stars in my eyes, you know, and bright lights, you know. Encore, mm -hmm. really, more? <laughs> I came running out and I hit the deck face first, man. I didn't even see the tripod. I wish I had a microphone because then I could have gone live from New York. It's Saturday night. Yeah, <laughs> the Chevy Chase routine. Well, that was one of those gigs where we, we've been playing a lot of college gigs on this tour. And so uh, a lot of the colleges, like the stages are just like, just set up just for the gig, like on a basketball floor or something, you know. So we've been getting some real small stages, smaller than than like your normal arenas or auditoriums and places like that would have. So the, so the lighting trees have been moved in closer to this action. And so Craig wasn't expecting this big leg of this lighting tree to be right there. And so sure enough, the I got him. They got a shape of my body on the rug now yeah. when I fell. It's like one of these, you know, on the floor. Make a cement cast out of it. <laughs> you've, been, you've been playing a lot of college days. How, yeah. How is that, uh, how do they react to the, the tradition of the Starship? You've got like a, you know, you yeah. guys being legends in your own time, the name mm -hmm. Starship. Uh, it just means a lot of the teachers show up to the show, too. Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, a lot of the people that were kids who used to see the airplane are now members of the establishment, quote, unquote, or, you know, teachers, you know, teaching isn't subversive things in the schools, you know. Isn't that funny to see, though, you know, the expansion of the age demographics of rock and yeah. roll? People are rocking much later into their Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, now, you know, it used to be 
can, can people rock and roll past the age of 30? And now that's just so passe now that now it's can people rock and roll past the age of 40 and pretty soon it's going to be, well, how about 50 <laughs> or 60? And, and, you know, I think, sure, why not? You know, why not uh, continue to perform and, uh, make, you know, make records, make music, rock and roll? If, I mean, if you live to be 80, you can do it at 80. I don't see any reason why not. The age of 30 was because things were always so conventional that nothing is as it was, and so why should that be? Yeah. That's the only explanation I can come up with. Well, and the audiences are growing up with the with the performers these days, you know, and as well as, uh, like with our audience, like like Craig said, it's an interesting cross-section. We have a lot of older fans that were fans of the, of the, of the Jefferson Airplane who still come to the shows, and then we have uh, the early, the mid-70s, earlier Starship fans who still come, and then we've got a lot of new fans that are mostly just familiar with Freedom at Point Zero and Modern Times who come to the shows, too. And, but, and they tend to be more visual because the younger people usually get right down front, you know, close to the stage, so the audience, from what we, you, you know, we can usually only see about the first 20 rows or so anyway, so it looks to us like the audience is very young. I guess they, all the, all the old fogies are way in the back, you What's know, taking it easy. Oh, a long time. <laughs> a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Craig, you're the youngest in the band. Is that still the fact? You're still the youngest? And you've been with the band since Red Octopus, 1975? Well, prior, prior to that, actually, the first Jefferson Starship album was Dragonfly, and that's when I officially joined the band. And three years before that... Um, wasn't Blows Against the Empire? But it wasn't really Jefferson Starship, that the band. You know, It was the name that Paul used for his solo album. And um, after that, he did three other solo albums that I was a studio guitar player for, but didn't really join the band until we all got together and said it's going to be the real Jefferson Starship. Up until then, Pete Sears was in Rod Stewart's group, you know, and David Freiberg is with Quicksilver Messengers. <coughs> you know, and I was uh, doing studio stuff and still in school, wearing a fake mustache and playing bars with this other band I was in <laughs> that would fall off in my drink, you know. <laughs> I remember in, in 75 when I was on the air at, at a radio station, uh, we made a point of, of you were, I'm not, I won't ask your age now, but in 75 or when you started with the band, how old were you? Because I was amazed at well, I did my first recording session as a studio guitar player with Grace Slick and, you know, a lot of the people that ended up being in the group on my 16th birthday. But I didn't, you know, the band hadn't really formed then. We were still just all doing sessions. So uh, when I officially joined the group, I was 18 years old, I guess. I've been in the band for over a third of my life, so. That's, that's amazing. I, you you know, seem so well adjusted. I mean, poor yeah. thing, you. <laughs> yeah, I got a little twitch every now and then. Are you subject to do any, uh, any harassment on the road from the older members of the band, or do you get special treatment or nothing like that no no it's all pretty even in fact they're they're so immature the rest of the band you know they act like a bunch of kids sometimes you mentioned quicksilver what what became of uh Cipollini, john Cipollini? well then you hear because you're in san francisco i see him a lot he was at our show in berkeley yeah. but yeah. as far as playing um he's doing a lot of different things you know with different <laughs> bands but he's not really in any band i don't think so 100 percent. he's just having fun tell me about uh well mickey you were in involved in a solo project last time we spoke alive alone uh, how yeah. free is the band to do whatever you want to do you know? well uh, you know the band doesn't really put any restrictions on anyone it's just uh, quite often you know you have a problem with uh, finding enough time you know to do a lot of the things that you want to do and obviously uh, at this point in time that you know the starship has preference over anything else I think I think all the members of the band feel that that way that so it's just you know, if you have time to do something, it's fine. You know, as long as it doesn't conflict too much with the with the, with the Starship albums and tours and whatever we have to do to keep the band going. Back on uh, Alive Alone, how that goes. Uh, yeah, I'm real. I'm real. Personally, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. You know, I, you know, I, I like it. I think it it's it's real good. Uh, it's gotten some good reviews, and uh, but it hasn't really gotten a whole lot of airplay yet. I'm kind of uh, disappointed at this point with the response that it's gotten, but. That's, that's it's one of them things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just you, you, you never can tell, you know. You never know. Right. And it's and it's as Rodney Dangerfield says, it's tough all over. Yeah, Quite you know, it's show. it's hard. I mean, uh, uh, so bad. Bad yeah. Copy. And radio stations are getting more restrictive as far as airplay goes. Like fewer records are being added all all the time now. And you know, if if a radio if the major stations, what they call parallel one stations, only add two or three records a week. And in that particular week, uh, a Rolling Stones or a Rod Stewart or a Fleetwood Mac album happens to come out, then uh, something like Alive Alone is just not going to be added, you know. 
uh, unless no you're longer the straight from the hip program. No, that it's tough. Place. It really is. But I, I still have the starship to fall back on, though, you know, so. <laughs> That's reassuring. Yeah. What, what about uh, the video projects that Starship is involved in, Craig? How, how does uh, 